welcome to my channel. Today I am going to walk you through exactly how to make this great Fisherman's Rib Infinity Scarf. Fisherman's Rib is a great stitch. It's pretty thick. It has some great structure to it and it's also reversible. So it looks the same on both sides. I love using Fisherman's Rib to make cowls and scarves because of its structure and infinity scarves are great because you can also wear them like a cowl. Um, they're pretty versatile and they knit up pretty quickly. So great for holiday gifts. Um, and you'll be able to make one for yourself too because it knits up pretty quickly on 10 millimeter needle needles and I use Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick. So it's a quick, fun project and a great first project if you're new to Fisherman's Rib. So come along, make one with me. I'll show you exactly how to do it. If you love the video, if you like my channel, please give my video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate the support. It helps other knitters find the project as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a great fisherman's rib um, infinity scarf. You can make it a regular scarf or an infinity scarf, but um, there's a lot of flexibility with what you wanna do, but I am going to use this Lion Brand yarn, respun thick and quick, and um, one skein is 223 yards, 204 meters. It's considered a super bulky weight yarn, but it is a little th on the thinner side for a super bulky weight yarn. I'm gonna use 10 millimeter um, needles, US 15, and you can use circular needles or straight needles. But basically, you are going to want to cast on an even number of stitches, and then we will do one setup row, and then you will be basically knitting the same row. Um, you'll be repeating the same um, row until you get to your desired length. So Okay, so I've got my 10 millimeter needles. I have my Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick Yarn. I'm going to make sure I have a long enough tail to cast on 16 stitches. And I'm going to hold that tail in front. I am going to tie a slip knot. I'm going to put the slip knot on my right hand needle. Tighten it up a little bit, and I'm gonna cast on 15 more stitches. I'm going to grab the yarn with and making sure that tail is in the front. I'm gonna grab it and hold it like this. I'm going to twist my hand, grab the yarn, and go under the yarn around my thumb, over the yarn that's around my index finger, and pull through. So now I have two stitches cast on. Under the yarn around my thumb, over the yarn around my index finger, and pull through. Three stitches cast on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 stitches. I am going to turn the work over. I am going to take my other needle and now we're going to do our first row. And this is the only time we will be doing this. This is um, our foundational row is just a purl. So we are just purling one row to get us set up. So you hold the yarn in front and you go over the stitch like that and pull it off the needle and you continue purling all the way across. Now I'm a continental knitter. I hold my yarn in my left hand. Some of you might um, hold the yarn in your right hand and that's fine. You can still follow the instructions exactly um, and do exactly what I do. You'll just be holding the yarn in your other hand. So you end up purling all the way across to the end here. And then when you get to the end here, you'll just flip the work over and we will start our fisherman's rib and we will continue this row until we get to our desired length okay so 
Um, I'm going to show you how to complete this row and you'll be doing the same row on both sides of the work for the entire length that you want. I am going to knit to about 48 inches. So this is what we do. We slip one stitch off the work. We knit one in the stitch below. So instead of knitting into this loop, you'll take your right hand needle and insert it in the middle of that stitch that's below the one that is on the needle. So you insert your needle, yarn over and pull it through just as you would normally. And you're gonna drop everything off that left hand needle. All right, so we, then we purl one and then we knit one in the stitch below. We purl one, knit one in the stitch below all the way across until we have two stitches left. Purl one, knit one in the stitch below, purl one, knit one in the stitch below, purl one, knit one in the stitch below. And I'll show you this again. It's a little different. It looks a little different on this first row just because we're so close to the cast on. And then you purl one, knit one in the stitch below and we have two stitches left now. And we will just purl these last two stitches. Purl two. So now we flip the work over and we're gonna continue that row again. So you slip one stitch off the needle and that just allows for a cleaner edge. Um, and then we're gonna knit one in the stitch below, right here. So not here, down here. Knit one in the stitch below, purl one. 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 Knit one in the stitch below, and then you purl these last two stitches, and you flip the work and you continue on. So you can tell that this is the right side of the work. This is kind of a neater edge. This is the edge where we cast on. So this is the right side of the work, and this is the wrong side of the work. And that'll just matter when we seam up for the infinity scarf. So now I'm just gonna continue the slip one, knit one in the stitch below, Purl one. And you can see the fisherman's rib start to come together. So you'll continue this on until your desired length. Um, and you know, I just wanted to note too, if you are doing this with a different yarn weight or needle size, just make sure you've cast on an even number of stitches. Um, you can cast on more or less depending if you're going up or down in needle size. And just one thing to note, this is a pretty thick stitch. So I went up one needle size. Um, I normally, so I am using a 10 millimeter needle and, um, I normally knit this if I'm knitting stockinette stitch, I normally knit this with this yarn on nine millimeter needles, but because this yarn is, um, because the stitch is so thick, I went up in needle size. So it kind of is a double stitch. When you knit one in the stitch below, you are doubling up the stitch. So you actually have two stitches that end up on this needle. So um, it's a really neat stitch. It is similar to brioche stitch. It looks very similar. It is just completed a little differently. With brioche stitch, you yarn over instead of knitting one in the stitch below, you yarn over and you knit two stitches together. So. This is what the scarf is looking like now. And you're just gonna continue on with that slip one, knit one in the stitch below, purl one, knit one in the stitch below to two stitches, and then purl two at the end. So that is what Fisherman's Rib starts to look like. All right, I just wanted to show you what it's looking like after I've continued on for a little bit and you've got this great double, kind of like this double knit pattern. Um, that starts to come together um, and 
uh, it's really pretty. So basically when you knit this, it's a rib stitch. So you're slipping one, I'm just gonna continue on. Um, and you, when you knit the one below, you're basically creating this double stitch because two stitches kind of fall together on, on the needle. And then when you purl, you're purling that um, knit one below from the other side. It creates this really cool alternating um, double knit look and it's really squishy and thick it's just a really great um, pattern a really great stitch so if you are new to fisherman's rib this is a great first project because it introduces you to it it's kind of a fun mindless knit because every row is the same but um, it is a little more interesting than just doing garter stitch or stockinette stitch. Um, so we're gonna continue on. We're gonna continue on to about 48 inches. And then you can see how that's fitting you for um, for the infinity scarf. I like to wrap mine around or around two times. Um, so you can knit to about that length and see how that's working out for you. And then I'll show you how to seam the scarf together. So I will see you back here once I've knit close to 48 inches. And here in a second. So I knit this to be about 48 inches long. So it will fit pretty snug when you double the infinity scarf when you wrap it around your neck twice. So just kind of play with it. Try it on around your neck. See how it's feeling. Um, you can kind of guess, you know, how long you think you should make it. So I just finished this side and you're going to want to make sure. So this is what the wrong side looks like down here. And this is the right side here. So you want to make sure you're binding off on the right side. So I just finished the wrong side. I'm going to flip it over and bind off on the right side. So if I follow the scarf all the way down, I am on a right side. So I'll bring it back up and you can see here I am on the right side. So to bind off, you basically continue the pattern, but we will bind off as we go. Instead of slipping the first stitch, we are going to knit the first stitch. So knit the first stitch and then knit one in the stitch below. And then you are going to slowly and kind of loosely lift that first stitch over that stitch you just knit and drop it. Okay, and then you're gonna move the yarn in front and you're gonna purl. So kind of continue in the pattern and we're gonna lift that stitch over and bind off and you are gonna wanna keep it kind of loose here. All right, and then you're gonna knit one in this stitch below and continue lifting that stitch. So you will only have one stitch on that right hand needle as you go. So this is a purl. Bind off, knit one in the stitch below, bind off, purl one, bind off. And remember to try to keep it kind of loose because the stitch has a lot of give to it. And so we're just continuing in the pattern and binding off as we go. And then we will seam up the ends here so make sure you have your stitch marker handy not your stitch marker your tapestry needle handy and a pair of scissors which I'm looking up and I don't see any <laughs> so I'm gonna have to pause here and grab my scissors and my tapestry needle all right so when you get to the end of the row here. You'll work that last stitch just as you would, so I'll purl that stitch. And you have one stitch left. So I'm gonna find my pair of scissors. Easier said than done. Got some, and I also found a tapestry needle. All right, so I am going to snip um, a, enough yarn to help me weave. I'm going to use the same end to weave, uh, to seam up the scarf. So probably about, I don't know, about 
two feet or so, maybe a, a little bit more. I like to make sure I have a lot of yarn. So I'm going to snip my yarn. And then you're just going to pull that stitch up and out. And now what you can do is join the ends together here. And you should have two right side rows facing here. Um, you're gonna wanna fold the scarf in half so it kind of lays flat. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit here so you can see how it's looking here. But basically, I just have the yarn folded here. And you're gonna want to take that end you just did and weave your end through the tapestry needle that you've got. And we are gonna start seaming. So when we seam, we are gonna go through we're going to start by going through that last V, that last V over here, and go into the purl stitch V over here. So that would be that little bar here. Okay? And pull that up. And now we're going to go into the purl stitch V over here. It looks a little bit different over here because that's where we cast on. And now we're gonna go through this V here and into this V here into the purl stitch V back here. into the purl stitch V over here. And I'm just gonna keep doing this as I go. All the way across. And it starts to seam up as you go here. I'm not necessarily doing this like you know, it's not an exact science, right? Like there's many different ways to seam. I wouldn't stress about this part. Um, just do the best you can. I usually just wear the seam kind of in the back anyway. Um, so just continue across and it starts to come together. Basically the goal is to try to line it up as much as possible. And then we're nearing the end here. And once we get to the end, We will just simply kind of weave the ends in together here. I'm going to do like a little knot here, kind of loop it through. And then um, I'm going to just kind of weave weave that tail 
kind of back through the seam here just to hide it a little bit. Again, there is no exact science here. And you can kind of just weave this in here. And then, see we had more than enough yarn here. Um, I'll just snip it and that will be on the inside. And then you're just gonna wanna weave in the other end kind of the same way. So just thread your needle back again and just kind of seam that other end through kind of the same way. Again, no exact science. I just kind of try to weave it through. And the goal is just to get it kind of enough into the scarf so that when you do snip it, no one really will see it. All right, and then I'll just snip that end. And our scarf is now complete. So we've seamed it together. And what's great is now you can wear it and you can double it up and it's great. All right, I, um, I love Fisherman's Rib. It's such a great texture. It has such fun structure and um, I just love the way it looks. So I hope you guys enjoy your infinity scarf.